Hello, my name is Jeff. This is 2A Self-Defense Law. What we do is we help people understand the law of self-defense in the simplest terms possible. What we do is we take the fear out of getting it wrong. If you look right now, August 13, 2018, the Florida shooter of a parking lot has been arrested for manslaughter. Um, you know this was uh, probably going to happen. If you look at the video, you got to hold your nose about it a little bit, especially if you have a little bit of the... Uh, the backstory in it with uh, him arguing with the girl, all, all you know, it gives a uh, uh, the optics of self-defense law makes it look kind of silly right now. Even though that he has been arrested, I still believe that this is going to be in the in the legal bounds of self-defense law. So we're going to be uh, probably hearing about this case over the next uh, few years. Um, see who his lawyer is, and, uh, and just uh, go from there. Okay. Now, there is going to be a lot of debate. There's a lot of misgivings on uh, in the gun community and also ABC about what standing ground means. I've heard a lot, I don't know, about 12 or so videos of uh, pro and uh, pro gun people and anti uh, uh, anti 2A people about self defense law, and it, it, they basically have a warped view of what standing ground is. Uh, we're going to be taking all, we'll just uh, start playing it. So senior yeah. legal correspondent and analyst Sonny Hostin, a former federal prosecutor. Formal federal prosecutors. I just want to say about this. Federal prosecutors do not do self-defense law. That is like saying um, uh, if you if you have a criminal, if you have a criminal defense uh, going on and you go see a, uh, a bankruptcy lawyer. They don't know. There's no uh, there's no self-defense laws in the federal courts. It's it's almost never happens. Okay, let's go from here. Is being good morning. good morning, Sonny. I mean, we saw this video and we've been talking about it. Many people have. It's being shoved to the ground. Justification for this law, and you can see that Marquise was walking away, was going back to his car. He wasn't continuing yeah. to confront him. That's the problem with the stand your ground laws. I mean, it allows a person to use deadly force if he or she reasonably believes that they are in danger of, of any harm. No, that's not true. Of any harm is absolutely not true. It is a great bodily harm or death. And when you are, if you're an MNA, if you watch MMA and you get the, uh, the other fighter on the ground, you're not seriously hurt. With disparity of force, with a position advantage, he had a reasonable fear of death or great bodily harm with the guy standing over him. The video doesn't show it very well, but he was within a couple of feet and stood over him, and then he backed off two or three feet. A two or three, a foot, a two or three feet isn't a retreat, and uh, we'll get into that um, a little bit later. But again, she tells a fabricated lie. You do not, just because you have a fear, it has to be a reasonable fear of death or great bodily harm. She used that, but then she backed, she used the reasonable fear, that, that word reasonable, and then she said, oh, I knew one. If you just feel like it, then, uh, you know, you can uh, poke a hole in them with a, with a bullet. Or, or death. And it also sort of eliminates this duty to retreat. It used to be when you were in public, mm -hmm. you had to flee. You had to retreat from a situation. Now, even if the attacker, alleged attacker, is retreating, you can still use deadly force against that person. That is simply not true on 3,000 different levels. All stand your ground means is that you don't have a due to retreat. Second of all, he was on the ground. Where is he going to go? This is a, a political attack on stand your ground. Uh, plain and simple. What was the other one? If he is in retreat. Oh, no. If he threw up his hands and said, no, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Please don't shoot. And threw up his hands and, you know, uh, and steadily walked backwards. Yes. <laughs> Yep, if he shot him, it'll be illegal. Even in the state of Minnesota, where we have a black letter law in the state of Minnesota, is that it recognizes that if your attacker puts up his hands and uh, he says, "I'm sorry," the state of Minnesota says that if uh, if uh, the shooter doesn't recognize that, oh well. Um, which you know that's kind of weird from the state of Minnesota to do, but she is wrong on too many levels. 
I mean, you would have to go. It's not there. there there's a one thing about being ignorant about how self defense laws is, but you have to go out of your way to lie like this. I know if they continue to show the video, I know we're stopping it here as he's getting shot, but he was clearly turning and walking back to yes. his car. Oh, so he comes out of the store. Mm -hmm. He sees this confrontation. We heard in the piece his girlfriend said he was doing nothing more than protecting his family yeah. and, and, and shoving him to the ground. Why isn't that justification? Yeah, why, why wasn't he standing his ground? Right. And that's the tricky thing about stand your ground. Perhaps he was feeling uh, threatened. Perhaps he was feeling the need to defend himself and to... Uh, I I don't know if she is absolutely this obtuse. You would have to go literally out of your way to be the, this obtuse. If you are defending a third party, you have an alter ego and reasonable, reasonable perception. You take on the victim who is being attacked. If you truly believe that your woman was under attack, you could only use verbal defense. But no, what did he do? Is he escalated, didn't he? Hello, people, he shoved him. That is an escalation of, of force. Also, if we want to take what she is saying, that why didn't he have a duty, um, a, a stand your ground right to defend his, his, his woman? She went from a car, which was, that is, has even greater protections, and she got out. She got out of the car. She left her environment. All right, but what are the two requirements for uh, for standing ground? One is what is not creating a felony, and the other one is to be where you're legally able to be. She was in a handicapped parking zone. She wasn't legally able to be there. So how can you possibly say that? A third party alter ego, he had a justify he had a justified right in shoving this guy, having a sneak attack on him, and it was a sneak attack. Uh, the guy didn't see it coming. I don't know if the girl saw him coming and that's why she got out of the car. So it would be a more of a two on one kind of a scenario. But it was a sneak attack and had nothing to do with standing ground. It had nothing to do with defense of the third party because of of uh, two issues, well, just really one issue. The other issues is what her fabrication is, is he elevated, he escalated the fight. Defend his spouse, to defend his mm -hmm. child, but then it shifts when he pushes the other person, and now that person can stand their ground. It's sort of just the wild, wild west. Prosecutors don't like This isn't the wild, wild west. It's, it's clear. Once one person goes above the next level of force, they lose their innocent standard. The Stand Your Ground laws, when it was passed in 2005, prosecutors opposed it, law enforcement officials uh, opposed it. But here we are, years later, and two dozen states have passed these, these laws. Two dozen states. Yeah, or a little over oh, two dozen. Okay. We heard in Geo's piece, uh, the store owner. Mm -hmm. I just want to, yeah, th this is really, uh, there's about 35 states that have a Stand Your Ground law. Whether it's through case uh, case law or an actual written black letter law, there's about 35. So it's in a majority of the states. It's not some weird little um, uh, commune in in uh, northeast, uh, you know, uh, California with some weird rule. About 35 states have uh, uh, have has removed it in the tree. And others saying that the shooter as uh, known to be having altercations like this as far as not not as shooting but altercations mm -hmm. with people parking so it, he, will that play in if this if he is charged play into it because it's almost like he's looking for a fight you would think but you know stand your ground laws were meant to allow this kind of behavior oh really stand your ground laws were meant for people acting badly are you really do you, this federal process you have to be this bad. Uh, yeah. Yes, and it, it, I don't know. He again, he was arrested today. We don't know what uh, what changed, what put it into a manslaughter kind of a scenario, because if he has in social media somewhere where he's saying, "I would like to shoot anybody who sit, uh, who uh, parks in a handicap uh, uh, parking spot and doesn't have a permit for it," I want to shoot that person. Guess what? That goes to intent. You would have you have to go out of your way to misrepresent the law this way.
behavior. They were meant to make sure that average residents could protect themselves without fear of not only criminal prosecution, but civil prosecution as well. Yay, she got something right. Why do you think that the Florida State Legislature put this law in act, and enacted this uh, law where it doesn't allow the police department to arrest people when um, they feel like it is outside the, uh, the bounds of self-defense? Why do you think that happens? Because what happened in the past is that the, the state, the prosecution, would use the process as the, the punishment. That's why they did it. The, the Florida State Legislature was, just wasn't operating a vacuum someday. In 2005, when, when this came to a bill, when the uh, self-defense immunity hearing, and uh, I guess we can actually get into that. In 776.032, it states, the law enforcement agency may use standard procedures for investigating the use of threatened use of force as described in Section 1, but the agency may not arrest the person for using or threatened to use force unless it determines that there is probable cause that the force that was used or threatened was used was unlawful. And guess what? When the Sheriff's Department uh, looked through this, they did not find anything that was outside the parentheses of the legal defense of self-defense. That's the reason why that was there. It's not some weird uh, ma uh, magical, mythical way of people shooting and killing other people. It's not a, a weird law forcing the police not to arrest people when it's not determined yet that um, the, the actions were outside the legal defense of self-defense. That's the only thing that is uh, uh, that this woman is trying to convey uh, wrongly. So the question is, will the state's attorney uh, charge this person? If passed as prologue, we've seen what happened in the Trayvon Martin case. Yeah. Prosecutors lose these cases. In Florida, even police officers are using stand your ground. So do I think that... that he, they I, you know, even police officers are using stand your ground. I would like to, to know her context. Give me a, a source where I can look that up. Uh, please don't use, from my understanding, please don't use stand your ground laws because they don't have a duty to retreat. Their policy dictates whether they have a duty, uh, a duty to retreat or not, not a, uh, a, a, um, a law he's going to be charged I, I just I really yeah. don't think so and you can understand why the sheriff probably yeah let's uh, go through there's three things that I want you guys to get out of this video one is 776.012 um, um, paragraph 2 a person is justified in using or threatening to use deadly force if he or she reasonably believes that using the threatening of use um, <laughs> threatening to use such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or others or another or to prevent an imminent uh, commission of a forcible felony. A person, this is it, a person who uses or threatens to use deadly force in accordance with this subsection does not have a duty to retreat and has the right to stand his or her ground if the person is, uh, if the person using or threatening to use deadly force is not engaged in a criminal activity and is in a place where he or she has a right to be. Again, standing ground, all it does is remove an existing duty to retreat. That's all it does. The other thing I want to get into is self-defense immunity hearing. People will say, oh, we just need to claim self-defense. What self-defense immunity hearing is, is a hearing um, before the normal trial where you can go in front of the judge and say, hey, judge, I, um, this is a self-defense shooting, and the state needs to disprove one of the five elements of innocence, evidence, proportionality, avoidance, and reasons. Um, by clear and convincing evidence, okay? That's all self-defense immunity does, hearing does, is that it's a prima, a prima facie case where you have the burden of production, and that burden of production is extraordinarily low. All you have, like another lawyer has says, more than zero evidence. That's all you need in a prima facie case is more than zero evidence that a self-defense claim is there. It doesn't have to come from you. It can come from a witness or... Um, or that kind of a thing. The other thing I want to get into, and we talked a little bit about it, is is 776.032, um, Section 2. A law enforcement agency may use standard procedures to investigate and use or threaten to use described above, above, but the agency may not arrest a person that is using or threatening to use force unless it determines that the probable cause that the force that was used or threatened was used was unlawful. Those are the three things that you need to get um, to understand about um, standing around. 
Standing ground, all it means is a duty retreat. And let's go back. One thing I did not cover in here. If you look at the verbiage right here, this is most of the verbiage of the totality of what standing ground is. Innocence, eminence, proportionality, avoidance, and reasonless. Okay? Sometimes what they'll do in the black letter law is they'll put everything into one. And then they'll say, oh, yeah, um, this is what standing ground is. No. All this basically is saying is giving you not having to explain yourself and prove a negative about standing ground. That's that's all it does. But the law, through case law and other parts of black letter law, will incorporate innocence, eminence, proportionality, and reasonableness. Okay, and that's the only thing that you need to uh, to go through. Hey, listen, if a a CCW person tells you something is wrong, correct them. If you hear a news article or a news company saying stand your ground is this, you know that they're that's BS. Okay, I want you to correct people. Go out, correct people, educate people what standing ground is is standing ground isn't. Hello, my, my name is Jeff. This is 2A Self-Defense Law. I hope this helped.